Modern thought, character, or practice more commonly known as modernism is an idea that fuels much of the practical experimentation, scientific knowledge, and technology today. A movement that originally began in Europe in the first half of the 19th century has spread across to politics, literature, and art. People began to push the boundaries of contemporary art. A new era emerged where the differences between sculpture, dance, and music were blurred. Faslov Nijinsky, Russian ballet dancer and choreographer, was one of the earliest modernists for ballet. Nijinsky's Afternoon of a Farm, or La Premedie d'Afun, rejection of classical formalism, created much controversy in the world of dance. La Premedie d'Afun was originally a poem written by Stéphane Malahme. The poem inspired French composer Claude Debussy's orchestral piece Prelude à la Premedie d'Afun, or Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn, on which Nijinsky based his ballet. This piece is based off of a stage work, and the stage work, the initial idea was to create a representation or a reimagining of the Afternoon of a Fawn from the perspective of how we think about women inside of Western culture and female sensuality, and in, to play with it a little bit and trouble some of the ideas of it by having them do things like disrobe, but not disrobe entirely, so conscious attention to sort of teasing um, with the things that we're used to seeing, which is that sort of revealing of women and the voyeurism of it. During Majinsky's time, ballet was very traditional and entirely based on technique. Women were portrayed as fragile, unearthly beings, delicate creatures who could be lifted effortlessly. Most stories were regarding uncanny folkloric spirits. In contrast, Afternoon of a Fawn featured dancers as part of a large tableau, much like ancient Greek fast paintings. The overt sensual nature of the ballet shocked audiences by exceeding limits of traditional ballet. Extensive angular movements created for a more futuristic effect. The ballet served as one of the earliest examples of modern dance. We're trying to highlight how the viewer is the voyeur and how the viewer is the male gaze or the male figure in the work. The audience is sort of functioning as the fawn itself as opposed to the fawn being there on stage. But the music is beautiful and I was interested in seeing how it's sort of a common thing in dance is to revisit works. I mean, other people have done versions of the Fawn and the Rite of Spring, and right? So this kind of coming back and reimagining. Um, it's an also an interesting act of reconstruction from a theoretical standpoint. Instead of reconstructing the original piece, you think about how you could take that idea or that concept or some element of it and reimagine it for a contemporary audience. the choreography to take place in multiple locations and those locations comment on how media and general uh, pop culture actually views and perverts women's natural sensuality, natural um, essence and makes it marketable. So it's something that is not the, the beautiful mother breastfeeding in the morning type of image you have. It's, it's more along the lines of could this sexy woman sell a coke to you? The extras were kind of the ugly window dressing uh, for the locations, because the locations were a main character. And having the extras there with their stale faces, their disconnected gaze, paints that portrait of you know, the dead kind of capitalizing on the living, the organic. 
One of the things that I drew from, particularly from contemporary culture, is actually women's fashion magazines for the initial poses that the movement then arises out of. And then modernism is a really sort of hefty artistic concept and I think there are some troubling ways in which modernism and most art intersects with modernism and dance. It really arises out of visual art, not out of the dance studies per se. So when I use modern, I'm more likely to use it in kind of a layman's pragmatic term to refer to what's happening right now, or I will use it to refer to the genre as a whole. Screen dance is a blending of choreography and film. And the choreography typically is designed specifically for interaction with the camera. So you're actually now able to use the camera as the audience and spin them around and actually actively participate them into the dance. Film dance is kind of a cinematographer's dream. You don't have to deal with too many static shots and um, you know general coverage rules that apply to narrative cinema to shoot the shoot the dancers in the most attractive light. We attempted to you know slowly progress closer and closer to the dancers each scene to replicate the flow of water downstream, which is um, what Colleen really envisioned when she listened to the afternoon of a fawn. So modern dance was sort of developing in its initial stages at the same time that Nijinsky was making Afternoon of a Fawn. So you have people like Isadora Duncan that are doing things that are drastically not ballet, and Nijinsky who's doing that inside of the context of ballet itself, whereas Isadora is off saying that she's doing something else. Inside of dance at least, genres are very fuzzy, particularly while they're going on, so in terms of labeling them, I think that's a kind of troubling idea. Ballet has in many ways, um, in some ways, not changed at all. I mean, he was making work after the classical period, so classical technique was already established. Classical technique still exists. So the change that Nijinsky brought in doing that work is actually, in some ways, one of the more radical things that's happened in ballet, and it hasn't continued. I mean, there are people, there are other examples. But I think what's really developed is the kind of choreographers who are using strong ballet technique and modern dance principles to make work that is probably more likely to be classified as modern, but not always. You have people like Pina Bausch, who has a ballet company who does stuff that looks more like modern dance. So it's maybe that the genres are now, they're both more established and more volatile in how they appear. I hope that after viewing this film, people could you know, take away more of a sleight of hand understanding of how you know, people's perception of, of themselves, of their neighbors, of life in general, are um, deceiving because they're sculpted by, you know, the puppeteers behind the curtain. You know, media and TV and radio and, and print advertising and, and books, they are very influential in how we perceive the world around us. So when you feel bad about yourself, it's usually because you're comparing yourself to these un un unobtainable uh, goals. And hopefully with something along the lines of this film, trying to tie in that naturally you are inherently beautiful, even without being compared to, to what the industry kind of you know, forces in, upon you.